Uh, really impressed with uh, just our competitive nature coming out of the locker room, obviously. You know, we had a bad taste in our mouth uh, coming out of the Western Kentucky game. We, you know, we played so well through 39 minutes and, and uh, you know, we're unable to close that in a, in, a, in a really tough environment with their crowd and so forth. But I thought our, our week of preparation was awesome. The guys were locked in. We went, you know, fairly long on Monday and Tuesday. And, and um, you know, I thought defensively we got back to trying to be who we, who we are. Um, you know, and just kind of walking walking back from the radio talking to you know Hunter I think he summed it up best that that two and a half minute sequence um, with two and a half minutes when, when we were flying around I mean that's kind of how we have to play that's kind of our identity and I think you know that type of play resonates especially in your in your own building uh, when play you know, when fans see the players enthusiasm and energy out there like they had Eric uh... Mason was one, one of nine last game. Obviously, I have a box, but he was a lot better than that today. You know, he, he hit it at like 57 seconds in, he hit a shot. And he hit that. Did you think, okay, he's going to have a good game? Just what did you think of his game today? Yeah, I thought he was, you know, he was great all week, though. Um, I mean, he asked me about every night to come have dinner at my house, but he never showed up. So my wife cooked a lot of extra meals for him, and there were a lot of no shows, but. Um, I mean, he was, his practice habits this week were awesome. I mean, he um, was locked in. I thought he was really good defensively tonight. Thought he did a great job of mixing up perimeter shots with three balls. Um, and then when he dribbled drives, he's got an innate ability to get fouled. Um, so, you know, I thought, you know, as, as important as anything was his 13 free throws attempted. Um, but yeah, he got it going tonight and, and obviously when you know, when we're able to, to hit double digit three balls, it, it kind of changes, uh, you know, the game for us. And, and uh, you know, I thought they did a good job running middle pick and roll. When they cut that thing to sing, single digits, they were uh, they were hurting our, our, our one five uh, switches on those middle pick and rolls. And then we went back to the hard show, which we had earlier in the game. Uh, and I thought we had a lot more activity um, down the stretch, because really that, you know, when that thing got to nine, the question is, is, is your team going to respond or not? I thought they did a great job responding. Hey, Eric, um, Frank was in here talking about how the live ball turnovers that you guys cashed in were a really big part of the game. Can you speak to, like, how you felt like that impacted the game? Yeah, I think every team's got, you know, strengths and, 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 and identities and so forth. And, like, we're, we know we're not going to be a great rebounding team. We're not, we're not going to hardly ever get offensive rebounds. That's just kind of who we, you know, that's, that's not how we're going to get extra possessions. So one of the things that we keep trying to educate our team on is how do we get extra possessions? For instance, tonight, they took 64 shots. We took 60, so we're minus four in the field goals attempted. But having said that, you know, we get to the line 30 times, three times more than them. Because um, when you're giving up 14 offensive rebounds to five, you've got to figure out a way how to get the ball back in your possession. And the way for us to do that is to have active hands and try to get deflections. Um, and and I, you know, I thought we got away from that a, a, a little bit as, as the season kind of slowly progressed. I thought we had some really good games of defensive activities. And, and there's always slippage with every team across the country. Uh, but I thought we got back to playing with the offensive pace we needed to. You know, t tonight and the Rice game uh, are the two games that we played with pace and pushed the ball, and we tried to show Jimmy Wick some, you know, we were walking the ball up the floor too much. That's, that's really not who we are. We kind of turned into a grinded out team for three or four games, and, and we don't really need to do that. I mean, we want to, you know, we want to get good shots every time, but we also have to play with a little bit more pace, and I thought Jimmy rushed the ball up the floor a little bit better. And obviously, when, when Jalen Harris comes in, he rushes it up pretty good for us as well. Great. When you called the timeout at 11.46, I think it was 68.59, what, what was the message in that timeout? It was really just the, uh, you know, the pick and roll coverage. Um, they, uh, you know, they were baiting us into the switch. And then they were ISOing and, and basically just trying to get to the foul line. They're a high free throw attempt team every night that they play. And, uh, we were we, we got a little bit of foul trouble, and so we just wanted to try to send the ball north two dribbles as much as we possibly could off of our hard show once we got out of the switching. Good. Eric, only two turnovers tonight in the first half. I don't think the first one was like under seven minutes left. How does that play into the style of game that you guys want to play? Yeah, I mean, taking care of the basketball, 
you know, errors in baseball, turnovers in football, like, you know, valuing the ball is so important. And, and I've even talked to the team. I, I know my dad would be rolling over, you know, thinking about it, but I'd rather take a bad shot than, you know, don't want to turn the ball over. So one of the, you know, we use the soccer term, shot on goal. Like, we got to get shots on goal. They at least have a chance to go in. And, and your defense can get set up. When you have live ball turnovers, it's just, it's, it's really difficult to, to win. And we've had some nights where we've had a lot of turnovers, but we've created a lot and it's, it's kind of saved us. But as the set schedule continues to uh, get harder and more difficult or more challenging, taking care of the basketball is gonna be something that we've got to continue to talk about and grow as a team. Bob? Well, Eric, you had a couple of things. Well, in the two and a half minute, you guys had an 18 to one run in the first half, and you obviously had a run late. Which two and a half minute stretch were you talking about with Hunter? I thought that with maybe two and a half minutes to go in the game okay. is what we were talking about. When, when we were flying around and the ball was being deflected and guys were diving on the floor for loose balls, um, I thought that was like our best, you know, J5 missed a tip dunk. It was that sequence. Um, even though we didn't score off that possession, I just thought the energy and, you know, I and mean, that's how you get fans excited to come back and see you play is when, when you play hard like that um, from an efforts and an energy standpoint. And I think people can feel our, our, our team's got, got some passion right now. Um, and you got to play with passion and, and uh, our guys, I mean, they were having fun too. And that shot Mason hit at the end of the half, I'm sure that's how you drew it up. Um, is that just... What'd you think of that shot? Is that just a sign that hey, it's, it's his day, you know? Yeah, I mean, we we subbed to get some shooters in, um, right? You know, right when when it was going to before it was going to be inbounded to to try to space it out. We knew like if Mason was or if Isaiah, Joe was in the corner that you know it's hard for them to help and push up or trap. Even though there was, I think there was five seconds on the clock. I thought he got fouled too, um, but he's, you know, there's a reason that he has a ball in his hands late game. You know, like sometimes. You need a player that can make shots that you don't diagram, or you can make shots when the shot clock's exhaust, exhausting, um, or when the defense takes something away, you need a shot creator. Um, and, and, and he's able to do that. Kevin? Go ahead. Uh, Isaiah Joe, 28 minutes tonight, he was very efficient when he was in there, but was the all the breaks and the rest that he got in the first half, was it as much a function of you having a lead, or is this something you're going to look to do is maybe curtail some minutes for some guys when you can. Sound like my wife. <laughs> She's always asking if I'm going to rest guys. I mean, we rested him because he had fouls, really, Kevin, because I, I mean, I, that's probably the least amount of minutes he'll play all year. Um, you know, sometimes I think, you know, Mason asked for a blow, Isaiah asked for a blow, and I said, I can't hear you. Um, you know, because those guys are just so valuable. You, you know, like a tired Isaiah Joe opens up shots for other people because Basically, what Isaiah does is he turns a game into a four-on-four -four game because no one leaves him. Guys are face guarding him, and so even when he's tired, he helps everybody else get easier looks. Follow so I'm up. not going to probably rest him. All right, follow up to that. You spent some time in the pool house and the front house this week. Did you need to get to 100 to get to the penthouse, or are you happy with this? I'm, I'm, back, in the house. I'm back in the house. My wife told me to walk out before I could come back and sleep in my own bed. Just the first half, both Mason and, and Isaiah had three steals each. Just kind of how key was their kind of turning defense into offense? Yeah, both those guys on the wings do, you know, such an incredible job of, of jumping passing lanes and, and, and using their wingspan and not having their hands in their pocket when they defend. And, and um, you know, like they're both playing up a position. And what I mean by that is Isaiah's a two guard or a point. And Mason's a two or a three, and he's playing the four. So when you got those kind of mismatches, we, we need those guys to really be active defensively with their hands. Uh, Andy, we're going to take a picture of you listening to part of my take over this league ball and then the scouting board. Do you listen to PNG because you feel like it helps you kind of relate to the younger generation? Yeah, I mean, uh, I got to know what my players are thinking. and. You know, I think anything that we can stay as connected to our young guys as possible, we want to try to do. Pete? You guys, you don't call a lot of timeouts, so that's by design, but do you feel like since you don't call that many of what you do, it's maybe a little bit more effective in the players' attention? I think so. I mean, one of the things, 
you know, having coached in the NBA, you always try to pick people's brains. And one of the coaches, obviously, that I've admired and coached against is Phil Jackson. And Coach Jackson coached in the minor leagues for a long time and worked his way up to coaching the NBA. And I've, you know, had that conversation and asked, like, you know, why not call timeouts? Because two of my good friends or two of the guys that I really respect as coaches, Jeff Van Gundy and Tom Thibodeau, it, it seems like they have a thousand timeouts every game. Like every two seconds, they were calling timeouts, and so everybody's kind of got their own, you know, philosophy. I watched Nebraska play Indiana last night. Coach Hoiberg did not call a timeout. Nebraska comes down in the flow of the game, hits a three, sends it to overtime. Um, so I think it's just, you know, and, and different situations are different, and teams are different, and. Um, you know, the thing that's a little bit different, too, in college and in the NBA is if you call a timeout with 20 seconds to go or something, you don't know if the team's going to come out in zone or man. In the NBA, I can pretty much tell you 99.9% .9 of the time they're coming out in man, and I can tell you how they're playing pick and rolls. Um, it's just different in college, and sometimes the players need to feel some freedom, and they need to feel that you trust them, and you don't try to over-control things. And, and I think my team right now knows that, that I trust their judgment even though sometimes we might disagree on some things, but but there is a level of trust for sure. I have a question for Coach? Yeah, Eric, how good a bounce? We asked you the other day about bouncing back, and you said you hope you bounce back pretty well. How good a bounce back game was that? And then when you have another full week to practice, how good is it to, to go into a full week of practice coming off a performance like that? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think our players can really answer that, Bob, as far as like, to, you know, if we have a lot of time to prep, we should be really good. Like that's our job as players. That's our job as a staff. To it's harder to prep. For, you know, and how much information do you give? You know, student athletes. If you, if you only have a two-day prep, uh, if you have a prep like this, I mean, we should know their offense and defensive tendencies and their personnel inside and out. Um, and that should help your defense. We should be able to help guys offensively with what they're doing. So I certainly think that. Um, you know, the prep time helped. Uh, and then we talked all week about, you know, how are you going to bounce? Like, when we lost a game after winning eight in a row. Like, how are you going to come out from an effort and an energy standpoint? Forget the shots, whether they fall or don't. But how tough are you going to play? And how much energy are you going to come out with for 40 minutes after a loss? Because I think that that really, that's character kind of telling. Like, you know, you, you never, you always want to keep that bad. You know, I wanted that them to taste that loss, um, like like our staff did, and I think they did. I think they were really upset in that locker room at Western. Like, we had guys that were really hurting, and as a coach, you want that. Like, you don't want to walk into a locker room or get on a bus or get on a plane and hear laughter and guys just blowing it off. But that that plane ride, guys were hurt in the bus to the plane. They were hurting in the locker room. They were hurting. That's what winning cultures are. Thanks, coach. Yeah. Thanks.